Uh, I'm very happy I was here. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me for uh, talking in this uh, meeting. So it's my pleasure to be here. So actually, the, I, since I first the thing I did when I started to think of so, so work with the uh, mommy is the uh, application for uh, uh, the lab soon. Uh, since uh, that was uh, introduced of the JKM, the after thing. Uh, so I feel that I've come home and it's a uh, here more about the, <laughs> the product of the Maxim. So my uh, topic two is explore the chemical information from patterns. Uh, this is not a new work. This is some work I did before, but I think it was uh, interesting to share this example how we did uh, explore the information from pattern. Since Jack has introduced me, so I just say a few short words by myself. So I'm a uh, uh, so-called business technology leader for Janssen Channel R&D, so responsible for uh, strategy roadmap and the key initiative for supporting the drug discovery and uh, development organization in China. Before that, I worked many years in AstraZeneca, both in Sweden and in China, so in Shanghai. So I was trained as a, a theoretical physicist right? and uh, more like a computational scientist uh, many years ago. So yes, computation is my, my favorite field of interest. So uh, here's a picture. Is I lived many years in Sweden, in Gothenburg, it's the west coast area. You see this very beautiful uh, picture of this uh, uh, harp of the Gothenburg. So, so that's, uh, of course, you live in this place, uh, you have to be, do something with water, right? So my uh, biggest uh, in hobby is uh, sailing. So in the summer, if the nice weather, I go out with a small boat, sailing boat in the harbor and go around. That's, uh, Thousands of small Iceland around the Gothenburg. So you can always you can always go lost somewhere. So, that's, <laughs> so that's my uh, obvious. So, so um, uh, I think it's a, uh, I just want to. So why people are interested in uh, patterns? Because uh, there are three reasons. First is a uh, uh, pattern. A single, not just a value, a source of uh, information based on for SAR uh, uh, structure activity relationship data, so published. So it's a single source of information. Uh, secondly, is uh, often that the target or structure information published in the patterns uh, um, before the, it's published in the journal. I, I will show you one example that. The, uh, so we also information published in patents, often it's a few years ahead of the publication in general. Yeah. And um, the other reason is the third reason is that the patent analysis is always an important part of the product workflow. If we ask medicinal chemists, they always start in early discovery projects, they always look into the patent, the look of information. So um, so so the patent the information patterns are used for early stage target validation and also through the host, almost all three stages in the clinical phase. So uh, three uh, um, interesting points. So for instance, understanding the competitive landscape of chemistry and the target area, and you investigate experimental procedures. So sometimes you have a compound you, look, you don't know how to how to make it, uh, look into the pattern, find this or some other your competitor, how they make it. So, and also the uh, solu selected two compounds for target validation. So patent is uh, one of the key areas to look into. So this, this is uh, uh, just a First reason I mentioned so the single large published source. Uh, this is a diagram. You show that is the patterns which are interesting for people in the drug discovery, the chemistry industry, 
So you see that every year is published around 40,000 to 40,000 patents. So in each patent, we know that there are a number of numbers of applications, and so it's associated with the applications. So there is an enormous number of the documents which are published every year. So here's an example, a compound, a drug compound which actually from Merck. You can see that this compound was uh, published in patent uh, in 2002, uh, but in, in 2004, and in general it's 2006. So it's two years, actually, earlier than getting known in the, uh, in the journal. So, so so next, uh, I will share uh, with you one of the, uh, the projects we have carried out uh, before. So we built up a chemical uh, text mining pipeline. So this pipeline consists of uh, uh, this number of components. Uh, you start with the uh, patented documents. Uh, which is uh, you either store in the uh, structured database or in, in a file system in your computer. And then you need to find a text mining tool and to mine this uh, uh, chemical entities, names, or library of uh, uh, vocabulary you are interested in. For instance, uh, any of the talk names, uh, whatever uh, vocabulary you can define in uh, files and use this tool to mine from those documents. So uh, text mining tool we actually we use a, a, a we collaborate with a company called Next Move, so Caffeine Fix. Uh, that's all uh, yeah I saw the Kim Actions also use that too. And then we needed to uh, once you extract those names from uh, files, you needed to do structure validation and conversion. We validated all those structure na names and uh, converted it to a valid structure format, like SMICE or uh, M uh, more files so on. And then from those structures, you want to do something, right? You, you want to do like a key compound, uh, analysis. For each of the patent documents, you might have uh, hundreds of exemplified compounds, and you want to figure out what is the key compound, actual key compound, the core compound from that, uh, that patent. Then you can annotate those uh, data with extra data, like you say, uh, activity data, extract from other sources or from the same documents, and build up a SAR uh, table, right? And then produce all those information as one package, the interactive pack for the scientists for medicinal things that they can do go further to explore whatever information they want to look into. So this is a, a workflow we built up. So this is an example of uh, how we classify the uh, chemical entities into the different categories, like a molecule, dictionary name, registration numbers, cost numbers, and so element, fragment, so and so. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, is that we need uh, to convert the name into a structure, either to SMICE or to a more uh, format. So we use, uh, uh, actually I want to mention that we use one of the, use a number of the, uh, test a number of the converters from different vendors. Uh, one of the from KMX, we use that name conver conversion uh, as well, so that's each of the program has 
good point and some kind of uh, weak point there, a strong point, but again, give different uh, results sometimes, yes. So, uh, this is uh, how the uh, <coughs> user interface look like. On the back end, we use a pipeline palette to glue all those data source, the workflow, the tools, and then user can explore that in Spotify, and which has a link to the uh, pattern document itself, which mar marked with the uh, different colors, the name as a the chemical, and the interlinked event. And then you can also link the, the uh, data with, uh, uh, for instance, do um, with the with the sort the activity information uh, if they're available uh, extract from other databases. So basically, this package can do like a key compound prediction, the profiling data, or com for instance the comp company analysis, serial assessment, select property and predictions as well, and even biological data with structure views. So. Um, yeah. So. Okay. Uh, this is just one 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 to give in more detail that the method for for key compound. Analysis we implement, for instance, a cluster seed analysis, that is a very common one. Uh, we assume that the, the cluster seed with the uh, uh, most ancient property will be the, the key compound. So uh, the frequency of group analysis is one uh, also method we use for the predictable. Uh, key compound. So that's a series about the, the frequency or occurrence of the R group given close to the best side uh, chance to combine. So I have to assume that, okay, this might be the key compound in this group. Another method, for instance, the max, maxima common structure analysis, which uh, you do, you have zero. Compound, you find what is the common, max common substructure. So, which give, they also give the ideas. So, so, sometimes you can, in the case, you can three methods to make predict the same thing. Uh, always they can predict the different things. So, so, you have different, you have to then first look at which one, in which case, are more likely to be the uh, right one. Uh, so, uh, so I use a case. So this pipeline we developed. So there are uh, two uh, use cases. Why, for instance, we at that time we have a um, uh, project in the companies try to integrate all those uh, uh, related information, like chemi chemistry information, chem chemistry structure, centric information, biology. Gene data, so on, so everything we integrate in one platform we call the pharma connect. So, patent is one of the uh, concepts in the, this infrastructure. So, that means we have to store all the compounds, all the compounds exemplified the compounds from the patent document into one single database. So, so we use this pipeline to run through all the, uh, I think, uh, all the patent documents from uh, 19, I think it was 1961 or 50 now or something. So there are uh, 12 million patent documents. So we use this pipeline and the one benchmark we has, okay, runs through those uh, mining process, so it's you know, about four hours. It's the pipeline really, really fast. And uh, with 
340 uh, computing nodes, that's a bigger Linux cluster. Uh, so then you put it, all the so data in one single database, which linked with, uh, so said, okay, this is all the compound you could find it in from patterns. Another use case is that, but uh, we use this pipeline. If there's any new publication of patterns, uh, you can quickly do a data mining and uh, figure out uh, what are the compounds from those patterns. Yeah. Uh, at that time, you may ask them why they use need to use that, that too because they're sign uh, they sign funds uh, and you have uh, the Tom uh, uh, Tom's Rogers uh, database and they they store like they provide the Tom uh, fund information from patterns. But uh, at that time, when you build this pipeline, you also close the database and update. You need it's not a public thing, but it's a few weeks later, when they wait, because they do the manual creation of the structure of the patterns. It takes time, so long as the public, I mean, that was a few weeks later, and also we're very limited the number, because if we have a, a 100 uh, simplified compound in the patterns, they only Ready the few of them, and four or five something. Like that. So that's why we have this too. So we can explore all those exemplified compounds from patterns. But the situ situation may change nowadays. So I, I'm not, I don't know, because I have not thought about this. So uh, this is, the, I think, this is the last slide I have. So uh, thank you very much. So.